There are hopes a new artificial intelligence tool could help to diagnose complex eye conditions for people in remote Australia where specialists are in short supply. The Melbourne-based Centre for Eye Research Australia developed the tool which processes eye scans to check for conditions. For more, we're now joined from Melbourne by researcher Dr Jane Sheets. Welcome to you. Just take us through, how does this actually work? So we're using artificial intelligence and a branch of that uh, deep learning. Uh, in terms of ophthalmology, what we're doing is we're feeding uh, retinal photos of the back of the eye into a system and we train it to look for features that are associated with common blinding eye diseases such as diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma, macular degeneration and cataract. The system that we use uh, has been trained on 70,000 images that were gold standard graded by uh, specialist ophthalmologists. And over time we train this to become more and more accurate. And what we're doing now is testing it in real world settings. So talk to us about how you are doing that. I understand that you are doing that in the remote APY lands. Who actually scans patients' retinas? Uh, currently in the AP Wylands, we have an eye health nurse. She's been in the region for several years now and she goes out to the different communities in the area. She uses a standard uh, fundus camera, which you would uh, see at any op optometrist. And she takes a picture of the back of the patient's eyes and she uploads it to our artificial intelligence software. And that software can give her an indication whether a patient has disease or not, roughly in 15 to 20 seconds. From there, she can tell whether the patient needs to go and uh, see an optometrist or ophthalmologist or whether they need to come back and see her in six to 12 months for a review again. Let's continue to use the APY lands as an example. How are patients there currently assessing their eye health? So currently the eye health nurse, uh, it's a similar system. She takes the pictures, but then what happens is those images are sent to an ophthalmologist in Adelaide um, and he reviews them and sends back a report for the eye health nurse to determine when the patient needs to be seen. So uh, if there's someone that's got a more serious condition, she uh, generally rings that practitioner to see what she needs to do. Otherwise, there can be a, a delay in um, getting the results to the patient and the positive of using artificial intelligence is that these patients get an outcome on the spot and they can tell whether everything's okay or whether they uh, urgently need to go and see someone. Do you expect that this will save somebody's sight? Yes, so we, especially with diabetic retinopathy, the earlier we pick up this disease, the better the outcomes are for patients. We now have really good treatments for disease, but if it gets to a point where there's severe vision loss, you, we can't go back from that. So if we can screen people earlier and pick up disease, we can definitely stop vision impairment and blindness in these communities. Is artificial intelligence ever wrong? Yes, uh, it's like humans, it can be wrong. Uh, it has really high accuracy at the moment. Uh, it's, it's better than some ophthalmologists in certain cases, but there are incidents where um, patients are either picked up as positive and they're not, or they're missed. Uh, but it's a very low percentage currently. And so what checks have you built into this system? So uh, it looks for whether the, the image is ungradable or not, so whether the artificial intelligence system can see uh, parts of the back of the eye. And currently, if something is picked up as positive, we have a referral system in place and the, the nurse who takes the images uh, sends that patient off for review. And how long will the trial run? Uh, we're hoping to wrap up uh, in the early part of 2020, but then we have, uh, we're looking to run a randomised control trial next year to compare the artificial intelligence to current telemedicine models to see how it compares in terms of accuracy, um, cost effectiveness and whether clinicians and patients are accepting of the technology. All the best with it. Thank you for explaining your work to us. Thanks for having me.